Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson and have several really good questions from inside the Red Raiders subscribers concerning Texas Tech's upcoming in-state Big 12 matchup against Baylor. It's also homecoming for the Red Raiders. That game is set to kick off 3 p.m. Saturday and it will be televised on ESPN2. I'm really looking forward to it. Of course, my Joe and, I, and the Double T Farmer and I will all be out there photos, uh, write-ups, we'll have the live thread, all kinds of content still that I'm going to post leading up uh, to the game and then after, of course. So look out for all that on Inside the Red Raiders and then on YouTube, uh, some content as well. But let's dive into these questions. First one comes from from Syntex, who asks, what is the most important thing for me to see this week? Better O-line play, better catching, etc. Yeah, both of those would be good. I think I understand the coaching staff being unsatisfied or dissatisfied with the offensive line, but I'm an end results kind of guy. Uh, while it could be better, I think they have been improved. Um, some guys have kind of been thrown out there. The combination is definitely different than what I would have expected heading into fall camp and then certainly into the season. But uh, I think Dalton Merriman's been good at left tackle overall. Uh, I think uh, Porsche moving into guard, uh, for the most part, has been a good thing. Um, Merriman at center has been good. He's young. He's only a sophomore. Or not Merriman, I'm sorry. Sheridan Wilson at center has been good. He's only a sophomore. I like Caleb Rogers at tackle better than I do at guard. I just do. Um, so that's been good. And, uh, you know, I just think overall, I think it's been okay. Receivers, they've produced. Now, there have been too many drops. But overall, again, they've produced. And Texas Tech's won. The offense has put up a pretty good amount of points. So, you know, I think for me, though, to answer your question, I want to see the team keep that edge. Going into that North Texas game, really the key for Mighty Joe and I was where is the passion from this team? Where is that running like your hair's on fire kind of thing that you always hear McGuire talk about? And honestly, I remember covering his Cedar Hill teams, and I think I even, in a post game, either since he's been at Tech or in a post game after covering one of his teams, like I think I covered an Allen Cedar Hill game that was amazing. Um, and the thing that stood out to me from those Cedar Hill teams, though, back in the day when he, you know, was winning state championships and all that, was just how fast and aggressive and physical they played on defense. And it didn't; it went from year to year. It wasn't like they just had some amazing players one year or two, a couple years in a row. It was it was a style. It was a way of playing football. And we didn't see, you know, by year three. That should be. This is your team. You know, they should be playing with your personality type. And I just didn't. See that. The first two games, I didn't see that. Now, is Tech's defense playing, you know, they're not Bama or Georgia or something like that. I'm not saying that or whatever, the steel curtain. Um, but they're playing with more passion. They're playing faster. They're playing aggressively. And it's paid off. Um, it's been a big improvement during this four-game winning streak. So I want to see that continue. I want to see this team continue to play superb, excellent special teams be efficient on offense, and then on defense at least play with that speed and violence. Uh, that's what I want to see. I, want, I hope that they didn't lose that in the bye week because in football, it doesn't seem to matter what level it is, uh, that happens sometimes. And I, I hope they, they've kept that edge, um, especially on defense. Cajun Raider says, uh, does Texas Tech make the Texas Bowl or, or even a better bowl? Uh, please don't say Independence Bowl. He froze his nads off in that thing. Yeah, uh, I didn't even go to that game, to be honest. Um, I went to uh, the Texas Bowl. I'm trying to think about where they played last year. But I did go to the Texas Bowl and they beat Ole Miss. Um, the, I didn't go and they – yeah. the Cal, I didn't go to the game and they beat Cal, but, you know, obviously that was a good game. Um, the pro, last two weeks – at least according to 24-7 sports, and there's so many projections out there. But the last two weeks, according to 247, I've seen them projected in the Texas Bowl or the Alamo Bowl. So something comparable. That's where Texas Tech they're at right now, based on their 5-1 and one and 3-0 and oh record. Uh, Raider3511 says, after watching Big 12 football during the bye, does the schedule look the same as you thought? Easier or harder? That's just a general question. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it looks about the same. The Big 12 is just chaos. It really is. You know, it looks like Iowa State and BYU are legit. Now, is Texas Tech legit? I think that's a legitimate question. Um, 
you know, both BYU and Iowa State are winning by like three touchdowns a game um, in Big 12 play. And Tech's winning by about a touchdown. They're winning by like a play game. You know, and, hey, 3 0 is 3 0. But um, Iowa State there obviously looks tough. Um, you do get a bye there um, in November. Um, Colorado here looks tough. What is that? I think November 9th. Um, just because you struggled in pass defense, and that's one thing they have, especially if they can stay healthy, which has been a, a question of mine going into the season and all that. But I think Colorado is going to be good, and it's going to be a it's it's a tough matchup for Texas Tech. I'm really glad it's in Lubbock. That could help a lot. I'm trying to think, Oklahoma State obviously doesn't look good, but you know Gundy has a way of rallying his team. Um, so I still think that's going to be a tough. I think that's there. West Virginia here. Tech should be favored and win that game, but that's no gimme. Uh, West Virginia could come in here and win. They've done it before. Um, so, you know, Neil Brown knows the whole deal about coming, you know, what Lubbock is and all that. So, um, I, you know, I still see Tech really about three and three. You know, TCU there, I think Tech should win that game, but it's kind of, a, you know, another in state rivalry thing. So, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Tech went four and two, um, but uh, my preseason prediction was that they'd be five and one right now. They just switch Arizona and Washington State, and that they would finish eight and four. So I'm going to stick to that just because I learned my lesson in the past of bouncing around and being so reactive. But it looks about the same. It looks it's just some things have kind of changed. Iowa State I always thought that was going to be tough, but it looks much tougher than it did going into the season. At Oklahoma State. I still think it's going to be – I'm not just going to say it's going to be easy there, but it doesn't look near as tough as it did. So a couple of things have just kind of shifted a little bit, but it still looks tough um, or about the same. Not, I wouldn't say tough, but about the same. And I think the biggest thing to me is this, what's clear is that their first half of the season was actually more difficult than we thought. Cincinnati and Arizona State were both much better than what we thought. Washington State is probably better than what we thought. Um, so, yeah, that that's kind of the thing I've learned. Polo Pyro 7 says, uh, Tech gets Baylor, Iowa State, Colorado, Oklahoma State all coming off their bye weeks. That seems like a lot of fresh teams they'll be going against. Yeah, I, I noticed that when the schedule came out. But I also noticed that two of those, like like you pointed out later in your question, that Baylor, Oklahoma State, you'll be coming off byes as well. Again, the bye week or off week, it can go two ways. I mean, it's they're really hard to predict. Sometimes it's exactly what a team needed, and I think just because of the injury um, quotient, uh, of it for Texas Tech. This this particular one came at a great time for the Red Raiders. But sometimes teams lose their edge, man. They just do. It's hard to keep it going or turn it off and, and turn it back on or who knows what happens within a team and the locker room and all that. But sometimes it, it, it hurts uh, teams that are on a roll. So maybe you can hurt some of those teams, you know, we'll just, but that'll be interesting to see for sure. Afros53 says, so – so Sawyer Robertson, Baylor's quarterback, uh, is now Baylor and Tech is having to face him. Uh, was there ever any kind of story on his recruitment or non-recruitment? He said, uh, Afro said, Coach Joel McGuire always talks about playing the fence around West Texas, a four-star just down the street, and there really never seemed to be any talk about it. Yeah, well, you had Baron Morton, the highest-rated quarterback you sign in the modern era. He would, he would be up there. there. I know they've Tech signed some really good quarterbacks like in the 70s and 80s and stuff like that. Um, but uh, he's one of the highest rated recruits, period, that you've ever signed. One, uh, you know, the highest rated quarterback of the modern era, one of the highest rated quarterbacks you've ever signed, four star elite 11 finalist. So uh, they like their quarterback. And I can't remember. So Coach McGuire came in, was it November of 21? So it been right before. Um, <clears throat> when he was actually hired and they finished the season and all that, but uh, it was the previous coach and stuff really that made that determination. I remember and in terms of there not being a lot of talk, I mean, it's because they had Barry Morton um, early committed and I, I never, and somebody could correct me like family or somebody out there if I'm wrong, but I never heard anything from, uh, Sawyer Robertson and people like in his camp saying that they were very excited about going to Texas Tech either. So it was kind of mutually like, mm, it's all right, you know. Um, and I think that's kind of bared out. Now, 
not that Barron is a superstar, but he's having a really good uh, season right now. Uh, and Sawyer's going to bounce around. And I, I do think him playing at home is going to, you know, back in Lubbock, the former uh, Lubbock Coronado standout. I think it's, I think that matters. Uh, maybe it can matter in a positive way. Maybe it can matter in a negative way. Um, but I, I remember I was asked about it a lot, and I would give this answer. You got Barron. You know, people said, why not sign two? I don't think there's really any mutual interest there, which people couldn't understand. But, I mean, that just happens sometimes. So um, I, I, I always kind of thought it would be nice to sign both of them. But, honestly, now just looking at it, I mean, I think it worked out for the best for Texas Tech. But we'll see. Ask me that after uh, Saturday's game. Uh, Sawyer leading Baylor. RCMMHH95 says, I know that bowl games no longer count toward the four-game limit for redshirting. Does the Big 12 championship game fall under that rule? That's a really good question. And I, when I saw that, my first assumption was, well, it's postseason, so yeah. And I asked a couple of people at Texas Tech, and that's basically the same answer I got back. So it's my understanding that a conference championship game is a postseason game, so that does not count towards towards the four games. The four games are in the regular season. So, I mean, really, if you're a true freshman and you're on a good team that goes, you know, all the way to the national championship, and you could play in like what I don't I don't remember how long exactly the bracket is and who gets to buy and all that, but I mean, you could play in eight or nine games and still rest sure, basically in in the best case scenario. But uh, no, I. That's a really good question, and there's so many rule changes and um, tweaks and all that. It's hard to keep up with, to be quite honest. And uh, But that's my understanding. That's what two officials at Texas Tech told me their understanding was, and that's my understanding as well. You play four regular season games and then conference championship, a bowl game, or playoffs, um, as many as, as your team is in. So that's that's pretty amazing. I'm glad they do that, though. I mean, it's a way – college football is nowadays that it makes sense to me so well like i said great questions from everybody i really appreciate it. big game for texas tech they look to win their fifth straight uh and not to mention it's an in-state conference rival and then all the uh the crossovers whether it be you know we already mentioned sawyer robertson the lubbock coronado standout playing for baylor um coming home you got Dave Aranda on the hot seat you know i think baylor's lost eight straight big 12 games dating back to last season and then, you know, McGuire and a lot of the guys on the coaches and uh, the assistants on the staff coming over from Baylor. So there's a lot of ties, a lot of familiarity, and um, it's a big game for different reasons for both these programs. But I uh, really want to thank you all for watching. Really appreciate the questions. And until next time.